Hello and welcome here to the channel of Ed and Naomi. Eh, bienvenidos aquí al canal de Ed y Naomi. Hoy quiero uh, <coughs> hablar de mi experiencia que tuve en Cuba. I just want to talk about my experience in Cuba. Okay. Um, I've been here 40 years. I came here when I was like close to 17 years old. So almost 17 years living in the communist system. Uh, yep, in 1964, that's me. Um, and I, uh, my parents, uh, uh, they were uh, pastors, uh, ministers in Cuba for all those years, for almost 17 years, okay? So even though I grew up in a beautiful island, Cuba, uh, where before I was born in 1964, it was... Uh, Not perfect like anybody is perfect, no country is perfect, no kingdom is perfect. Only God is perfect. Uh, so that I hear all the good things that Cuba used to have before uh, the communist system came to Cuba in 1959 when Fidel Castro took over the island and I was born in 1964. <clears throat> But I hear so many beautiful things during that time like here uh, you know uh, they, they like everywhere you know the, the the rich people the middle class the poor and it's always going to be that way everywhere you go you can have no rich everywhere because it don't want to work we got we need those we need the middle class and then we need the poor is going to be even the bible say the poor is going to be around you so okay but my experience that i have there for all those 17 years even though i hear so beautiful things even though batista before fidel castro i hear all those things about uh, him and all that stuff but at least like i always say and i told my mom you know at least they had the privilege to, to go to the store they can buy things and i mean and uh and then all that just went away when Fidel Castro took the power. Now, I have some pictures here. I, I choose half of a sister. Uh, uh, she also came. We all came uh, in 1980, mm -hmm. 1981, May of 1981. So yeah, it's been already 40 years. And she was like 12 years old, okay? So uh, I remember my dad had the opportunity to come to this country when they asked him if he wanted to come, but he said no. The day I leave Cuba, it will be with my whole family. And it happened. He had to wait almost 17 years to finally, during that time, <sighs> something happened, I don't know, uh, I don't remember well, but they let all those pastors who did have some family member here in United States and any other pastor who live here in this country, United States, if they can claim them and that was the opportunity for those pastors and the family to come legally to this country. Okay, so I think it was us, four of us, and uh, I think two or three more pastors with the family. Okay, but Here I am, growing up in Cuba, and yeah, this is my, uh, that's me in front of the church. <laughs> I don't know who took this picture right there, but that's me. And if you see that bicycle, that tricycle, I don't know how they call it, I think, okay? And that doll, that was one time, one time that my mom, In Cuba, all the toys went away. The government, little by little, took away the whole island, okay? And little by little, everything started to be rationed. Everything is by the book. Everything uh, for the kids, uh, once a year, uh, I don't remember the month, but they used to put in different kind of stores. They used to have around the different kind of towns, uh, the toys. So they give each family a number. But one, it was four days. So the people who got the uh, first day, those numbers on the first day, were obviously those people, those families, uh, 
for sure they're gonna get the better toys that they have there. They used to give you the good, good toys, the kind of like me and the, the cheapest, cheapest, okay? So it was three of them. But one time, <laughs> one time, my mom got the first day number 11. And that's when she chose that one right there. Of course, they got to pay, you know? And that's the first time my parents has to, they bought me that for me. And the doll, I guess, too. Or oh, somebody give that doll to, I don't know. I don't remember that doll. But, oh, look at me. I was there, like, probably, like, three years old, okay? And I was in front of the church right there. And that's where I grew up, okay? The church was in the front, a door, and in the back was my mom, my dad, and me, and then later on, my sister, okay? And uh, a small area and when we started to grow up uh, my, my dad has to ask permission to take a little uh, piece of the church to to make a room for us because we was growing and it's no way they're gonna we all of four of us in one room so that's uh, when my dad my ma <clears throat> uh, make a room for my sister and me and then like a living room area so when visitors come, they can see it and, you know, because it, that that's how small it was, all right? So, but yeah, that, that's the first time, I guess, I received that bicycle, three, three cycle, you know, it had the, this right on the, the back. I don't remember how they go. I forgot. This is my parents right here, okay? Uh, they, were, they already was uh, graduated, okay? Uh, uh, to be ministers, okay, and they got married right there, okay, and uh, beautiful pictures. They already still with us, thanks God, almost 80 years now in October. My dad, my mom's gonna be 79 this year, and I thank God they still with us, okay, and uh, but the experience I went through it was so sad knowing. Everybody who lived before Fidel Castro and then me growing and like me, many others who grow up in this system. A system that it let you feel or think that everything is okay, but at the end, it control, control even your mind, your mind, your mind, they control your mind, okay? Little by little, uh, introducing the way they think, the way they do things, everything was against United States all the time, you know, and communist and socialist is good, it's not bad, and that's the way they teach the kids, okay? <clears throat> now, for us, as uh, pastors, kids, um, we never we never we never was communist, we never Became, become communists, okay? Uh, now, a lot of people, uh, when they used to be in church, my mom told me, because I guess I was small, my mom told me that before that, the churches was full, like here. My mom used to be in the streets, singing, uh, preaching, uh, bringing the kids to church to listen to Sunday school. And little by little, when that system came and Fidel Castro took over, that was done, okay? And then they pushed the people to tell them, if you don't become a, a, a communist, communist, um, you can be a teacher or you can have no career, actually. If you want to be a doctor, mm -mm, you got to belong to us. You got to be a communist, okay? If you want to be a teacher, whatever you want to be, Okay, they first you in that way to belong to them. In other words, okay, be part of the system. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I remember one of our friends. He was she was crying when we she came to my parents. I remember I was younger, but I remember uh, and she came crying because she told my mom, my dad, oh my God, they don't let me be, she want to be a teacher, and she say, they don't let me be a teacher because they want me to belong and sign a paper to be a part of the system, a communist, and she say, no, I'm a Christian, I don't going to belong to you guys, I don't want to be a no communist, so 
like me, you know, and my sister, we never belong to that system. So a lot of people say no. A lot of them went to jail for years, okay? Because they was fighting for a better Cuba, but they find out that it was a communist system. And uh, a lot of them, uh, how you call the political prison, prisoner, okay? And uh, um, it's sad. It's sad that, you know, you have to belong. And then the churches start to get empty. That's what mama told me. The churches start to get empty because they was pushing people. What? You don't, you're going to lose your job. Is sound familiar? Like the way we live in today here? Kind of. That's kind of like mentality. That That's the way they think. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this. And I'm talking to you. Is somebody come through here? And I hope you understand. It's a little bit going to be a little bit longer. But it's just the experience I went through. And when I see things around, I mean, it's just to be alert, okay? Things can be good. And I don't know why sometimes kingdoms, presidents, uh, governor, all, all those people got some kind of mentality to think different to destroy really a country. Because that's what happened in Cuba. Because if you say, okay, I'm socially a communist, but I see that everything is the same, and it's just a little change here and there, well, okay, well, that is good. But I can talk good things about that. That don't work. That don't work. And every part of the any other countries that you see that is a system like that is not working. People are hungry. You know, they don't have food. They, they can live in freedom. In Cuba, you say something against the presidents, against the system. They used to take you to jail. My dad went to jail a few times. A lot of time, my mom had to go and find another pastor and find that person, that pastor from another church to find out where my dad, where's my dad, you know? Uh, I mean, my mom looking for my her, her husband, you know? And many times, yeah, one time they put my, my dad, they put a gun in his head, mentioned him, his mom, I'm going to kill you. You're never going to see your family. You're never going to see your, your girls or your kids. They used to follow us, okay? They used to follow us all the time, okay? And uh, yeah, but that's what communist systems do, okay? And little by little, uh, they used to take control of all the school adoctrination in the kids because that's what it is they adoctrination to the kids this is what is good this is bad united states and capitalism is bad the socialist communist is good this is the way we believe this is what i'm going to teach you and that's what they do okay in in an area we used to live in each corner they used to have people okay who used to always Watch around the neighborhood to see what's going on, what do they do. That's why they always follow you. They knew everything. So, you know, but I thank God that I can say I'm here after 40 years, but I thank God that I never did belong to any communist system. Okay? And I'm telling you, it's been so sad and so bad and after year after year after year, Everything got worse and worse and worse, okay? Uh, well, to tell you one thing, I have a book here because a lot of people at work, okay, uh, they used to ask me, Naomi, that can be true that they give you. This is a Cuban. I don't want to give you the number fast because that belongs to somebody. It's not mine. But thanks God, after many years, I asked for and they give it to me. Okay, but this is a book they give uh, the Cubans for many years from when Fidel Castro took over. Okay, it's a, it's a book that they have January to December and every, uh, uh, every month you go to that store, you have to pay, of course, with your money, but whatever you have in that store, then they put like here, rice, how many people in the family, five or whatever, five pounds or one pound, whatever. Uh, oil, the uh, sugar, uh, coffee, I see. And I mean, the list probably used to be a little bit longer, but 
year after year, probably the list went a little bit less and less, okay? And now I don't even know if they even use this book anymore because you go to the store and it's nothing. I was there to visit one of my, my aunt who was really ill and she's old and I feel my heart after 20 years we, without being in Cuba, um, you know, all that alone. I went in 2019 and I saw a lot of my cousins and uh, and her is the last uh, aunt that I have there. And, you know, so, but it's so sad to see how destroyed Cuba is. The street, the, the, the grocery store, whatever store they have there, they don't have nothing. It's, it's crazy, you know, it's, it's like, what the heck? <sighs> I, I don't understand, but anyway. How are you going to tell me that's going to work? That don't work. That don't work. That don't work. It never going to work, okay? So, yeah. So, every every month they put, you see, the line, how many pounds they give you for rice, uh, toilet, no, okay, toilet paper. When I was there, I'm showing you because people don't believe me. And I know a lot of people when I used to work at the jail because I worked there for all, 32 years, okay? Uh, they asked me and I talk my experience okay and the thing that I see that they don't want to believe that is true a lot of them think that socialist socialist socialism is good that is not the same like communism and I always tell them is the same one thing jump to the other easy and fast okay it's like saying we cousin okay so you gotta be careful we got to be careful, okay? So, but they, a lot of bad time when I tell them about this, they don't believe me, okay? Many times, if you have, um, they used to have soap to take a shower. If, if they did have soap during that month, and you fall in the family, well, they give you, I think, four soap for a month, Okay? Uh, how many rice if they did have rice or sugar so by the end of the month a lot of people didn't have enough to take a shower enough and I see all this here that you can buy any store even they have here a dollar tree and sometimes you can get good brown I don't know which one is this one is this one I don't know about this one but I got that there too and any store you know and you don't have to make that line and all that stuff. And if you have the money, you go and buy it, that different brand, cheaper or, or more, a little bit more expensive and uh, some deals that you can get. And I remember, man, no soap to take a shower. And I don't even remember when I used to take the, to wash my hair. I don't even know what I wash. I remember I used a big soap that they used to give us in Cuba to wash the clothes by hand because at that time, I don't know now, but it was by hand, everything. And uh, that soap I used to ha to use it to wash my, my hair many times. I remember that, okay? A big soap, you know, to wash clothes. And uh, what a privilege we have here. And you know the Bible say, and people don't want to believe. Many believe, maybe don't believe. But what I know is that see the signs. When you see the signs that, okay, it's going to rain, you know it's going to be a cloudy day. You know, uh, you don't want to see the sun and something's coming. When the hurricane comes, you got to get ready because something is coming, you know. When you see all these things around this country, around Cuba for many years, you know, you have to smell like something is fishy, that something is not right. And people still defend, okay? Things like this. And I'm thinking, it has to be God that is closing the eyes so they don't see and close the ears so they can hear. It's, so the Bible had to, you know, um, it got to come true. Whatever the Bible says, it's going to come true. So it got to be that way because there's no way that you seeing everything going on and they taking away your meal, your rice, your food. I remember my dad used to be, uh, used to go to Pinal del Rio uh, 
it's right here. Cuba is big like this, okay? On the other side, Pinar del Rio, really pretty. I went there, I took my husband, he's not, he's not Cuban. I've been married with him for 33 years, but I took him for the first time, and that was one of my dreams, to take my husband to see my own country, okay? I wish him to see the country and a beautiful island, but it's not. It's really destroyed. The only beautiful that Cuba have is, um, I don't know, the mountains, the countryside is beautiful. Havana, probably some areas they paint and try to fix here and there. But it's so sad. The street is crazy. So, so beautiful island that is being so destroyed. What's the deal with that? Who wants something like that? Who still defends something like that? <laughs> I don't get it, people, okay? But uh, yeah, he went with me, of course, watching everything around, you know, and, and it's weird. But to tell you the truth, okay, in Cuba, the privilege that we have here, that's why you got to thank God for everything you have. Even if you have little here and you say, oh, everybody here, we have poor people and people in the street. People sometimes are in the street because people don't manage their life. Listen, people don't manage their life. They spend money, they don't save money. They get into addiction, drug, alcohol, and uh, gambling. So many things out there that they make them to live that kind of life. That's why you have to choose the right in your life, okay? Because whatever you choose in your life, that's what you're gonna get. So don't blame the government. Don't blame that, oh, it's people here in the United States poor and don't have to eat. That's a lie, okay? They live like that is because they choose that kind of life, all right? This country give you so much privilege, especially the, 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 the freedom of speech. That's one thing that when I came from Cuba, I dreamed that I was staying in Cuba. And in my dream, I used to see my mom, my dad, there in the airport. I was here staying in Cuba. A lot of people come with those dreams, okay? Because that's what Cuba do. They uh, uh, traumatize people, lying to them. Uh, I mean, adoctrinating them from little, and that's what you see. Always afraid to talk because any you don't you can trust nobody. It's still Cuba is still right now like that, okay? After July 15 or 16, whatever that happened uh, last year, see how people are. They, that's what they do: control and control. So that's why be alert when you think. When you see things around your country, wherever you are, okay, just be alert. Be alert, okay? You don't want to live that way, okay? I did, and it's not nice, okay? God was faithful to us, even though they took my daddy a lot of time, even trying to kill him, following us all the time make our life miserable okay one time they put us or me in front of the the school all those that are religious come over here and they did a platform with the stair and we, we all the kids up there in front of the, the the school just to embarrass us because we believe different than them because we were we wasn't no com we we didn't belong to them we didn't belong to the communist system so that's even the, they did that to us I was there, but I wasn't no afraid. I was so proud for what I believe. I believe in freedom. I believe in, in freedom, freedom of a speech, okay? And that's what I believe, and that's what I fight for, and that's what I'm here, okay? No toilet, me, me, my people. I remember those times when I lived there. You see this right here that you still have the privileges still to have here, the toilet paper. No, my daddy had to put in the little bathroom that finally, after years, he make and fix in the back of our church, our house. And this is what he put. You see this? This is newspaper. You see this newspaper? Whatever we used to have there, he used that, put a nail, and we put those newspaper and pieces there. And 
I don't know how we did it, but I did clean myself with this newspaper that I remember almost all my life because we didn't see this, okay? Soap, coffee, nothing like that. Coffee, when we used to have coffee once, they give you a little pound, so I don't know how much pound a month. If you didn't have no more, well, that's it. Let's see next time they, they have some, okay? Little simple things, okay? To make a spaghetti, I, I, I give you an example. This is what I got here from Publix, you know. The good thing about here, you can buy anything, different price, any brown that you like. You like expensive, cheaper, it's your choice. That's the good thing about it. It's no excuse. This country help all those people always in needs, okay? All people, they always help people. Stop lying and saying that it's poor people here. Everybody, even poor people, we still have food. And if you don't have enough, you always get some help. And you always, Publix, all the uh, store here, they donate to different places and churches and they give food, steak, cans, milk, everything. So sometimes it's just the way you live in. You got to stop also depend on the government. You got to stay away from addiction, stay away from that kind of life. The bad life that you live in, just like that, it don't want to get you far, okay? When people you see they have everything they have, a lot of them work hard for what they have. Some of them, they are in drug dealers and doing all that stuff, and that's why they get all the money, and they get all that stuff too. Wrong things to do. Do everything that please God. Remember that. Because at the end, in front of God, we all going to be, and you have to be right. So anyway, yes, oil. I put a sample here. You know how many of these you can get? Different kind of oil, sugar. Cuba produce sugar, sugar cane. And what Cuba do? They export all the products from Cuba to all the countries and ask, okay? We didn't have enough sugar by the end of the month. Why? Because everything is ration. You know, everything is in the book. How many you have in your fry? Four? Okay, this is the amount we're gonna give you for the whole month. What the heck? I buy whatever I want in here. Enough that lasts me for at least a month or two months, okay? So, all this sympathy, milk, milk, guys. Mira, I have this in case of emergency, but I give you this as a sample. Milk right here, guys, okay? In Cuba, at 12 years old, they took away my milk, okay? And then when I moved here to to United States, I hear at seven years old, they took away the kid in Cuba when they turned seven years old. What in the world? And you still clap your hand to say, Fidel, Fidel, or, 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 or communist is the best in the whole world. Are you out of your mind? Now you can talk like that and you can express yourself like that probably because you're living good and you still have food and you still have stuff. And that's why you thought that way. But you know what? Stop. That system never worked, guys. That system never worked. Water, water. We can buy water here, okay? And buy water or you can install, install something sometime that it comes with clean water. But in Cuba, what you do? A lot of times you put a tank in top of your roof. And when they give you that water at this time, the water go up and you feel it, try to feed that tank all the way to the top, okay? But that tank wasn't clean. You don't have any stuff going inside. Sick, people, that's sick. And, and, and you know, and that's what I'm saying, my story. And I'm gonna continue uh, part two, okay? Because uh, I don't think uh, it's 30 minutes, but I'm going to continue because I want to still to talk a little bit more. So I know it's a little bit long, but I want to say this in English. I, I know even though I'm here all this year, I still, or you can still can hear my, my, my Cuban accent. But I know you understand. Like I told my, my, my kids, they always make fun of me and my husband too. But I'm like, be quiet. At least I can defend myself. I came here without anything, but I got 
uh, thanks God, everything, especially the freedom. Okay, so let me stop here. I'm going to download this and I'm going to do part two. Okay, see you part two.